Hey everyone, this is Sean Smith, the Pink Caddy Coach, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how to do a year-end review properly so you can set yourself up to succeed big in the new year. All right, you can probably tell I'm in a festive mood. I got my silly sweater on. Actually, this is my son's silly sweater, so it's a little uncomfortable. It's probably uncomfortable for you to look at too, but you know, I'm dedicated to your viewing enjoyment and amusement. So anyway, what we need to look at is how to do a proper year in review. What happens as we turn the calendar and go from one year to the next is people get caught up in all this willpower excitement. It's all based on hype and this is going to be my year and etc. But they haven't really shut the door on and learned from the year before in order to set themselves up to win in the new year. And this is a really critical time that you hit the new year with the right kind of momentum and the right motion. But more importantly, you've got the right kind of internal organization to meet the new challenges and be ready to hit the ground running so that you truly can make this a breakthrough year. Okay, so three questions for you. The first one is, I want you to take a look at the failures that you had last year. Now usually, I'm not a big fan of using the word failure. I put it in quotes here. I don't like to label our outcomes as failures. However, that's how most of us think about the year before. So I wanna pull all of that negative energy out by just go ahead and searching for the things that you're considering failures. And I want you to spend a good 15, 20 minutes going through your year and think, this was a failure, this was a failure, this was a failure, this was a failure. Identifying and acknowledging things that you're holding on to unconsciously and energetically as failures isn't going to make them any worse than if you pretended that they weren't there, right? So we wanna call them out so that they don't have the grip on you anymore. So spend a good 15, 20 minutes here and list all the failures you can think of from the previous year so we can do something with them. Now, once you have that list, the second thing is to identify what the lessons were from the failures. See, we have a problem in the fact that we don't want to ever fail. And because we're scared of failing, we create all these sabotaging patterns, perfectionism, procrastination, fear of failure, fear of success, the list goes on and on. But at the core, Part of the big problem is that we have an unhealthy relationship with the idea of failure. And I know intellectually everybody understands that failing lets you progress forward and if you fall you know, face down, you're closer to your goal and every no gets you closer to the, to the yes. Consciously, we understand that. Unconsciously though, we have these negative, unhealthy connections to the idea of failure. So it's really important to say, yeah, this was a failure, but here's what I learned. And this was another failure, but here's what I learned from that one. It's important that you connect lessons and growth and wisdom to your failure so that your unconscious mind loosens its resistance toward negative outcomes, right? Toward things not going your way because you wanna to get to the point where no matter what you try, you realize that it's either a win or a win. You either get the outcome that you want or you learn a lesson that's eventually gonna help you get the outcome that you want. If there's nothing to be afraid of, then you're not gonna have any resistance to try for the things that you really wanna get out of life and get out of your business. This might be an emotional process for many of you and that's fine. If there's emotion attached to this stuff, let it come to the surface so that we can clean it out and clear it out so that going into 2016, you don't have the negative emotional connection to all the stuff from the past. And then the third thing, once you feel complete in these top two, the third thing is, what are your controllable commitments? Not, this is the year that I'm gonna get the pink Cadillac, this is the year that I'm gonna make $100,000. That's okay to have those tangible outcome goals, but I want you to commit to your controllable activities. You don't control if you actually get those tangible goals. A lot of things have to take place. A lot of people have to show up and say yes, they gotta recruit, blah, blah, blah. But what can you control and commit to? Hopefully this has been beneficial. If you've enjoyed it and you want other people to learn from it and benefit from it, then share us, 
share the video on Facebook or Twitter or however you do that thing and let other people know about it too. So again, I'm Sean Smith in the very awkward, very tight, holly, holiday, silly sweater. And I'll be talking to you real soon in another video.